So how do we feel about the Bills after this past weekend? Do we feel worse about them, better about them? I, I admit I do think it would be a climb to say that you feel better about them. But I don't feel worse about them. I think I might have put my foot in my mouth a little bit last week when I said that I thought there was a legitimate chance they could go undefeated, but believe it at the time. To be honest with you, I still think there's a really good chance they win the rest of their games. As long as they have Josh Allen at quarterback, they're going to have more than an opportunity to win games. They're going to win most of them. And they're going to certainly be in the rest of them. He is one of, if not the best player on the field on either sideline whenever he takes it. And you could go, well, Lamar Jackson this, Patrick Mahomes this, Aaron Rodgers this, Tom Brady that. Like, I'm not going to argue the top five quarterbacks in the league with you right now. I'm just not going to do it. Josh Allen is one of the best players, if not the best player, at the most important position in all sports. Bottom line. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. The guy went, he just set a team record for completions with 42 this past week, 400 yards, really just kind of put the team on his back. Everyone's falling down all over the place. Linemen, receivers, cornerbacks, whatever. And the Bills are still right there at the end. Do I want to see them make that play at the end of the game? Sure, of course I do. I would have loved for them to win that game. They didn't. The reason teams don't go undefeated in the NFL, there's just too many variables. And I think Miami on Sunday was kind of an anomaly. It was the perfect storm or the perfect heat wave, probably the most appropriate way to say it, for, the, for you know, the first loss of the season. Just That's just how it works. And I'm going to give Miami credit. Miami won the game. You know, no matter what happened in between those lines in that 60 minutes, they ended up with more points. I, I still think if they played the same game this weekend, the Bills are still favored. The Bills will probably win that game. In Miami, neutral field in Buffalo. The spread would obviously change for either. I think in Buffalo later on, the Bills are at least an 8 or 9 point favorite. Neutral field, I bet they're a, a 6 point favorite. Back to Miami again this week, probably still a 3 point favorite, which is I think right around where they were this past weekend. I, I just think they're overall a better team and will win that game more often than not. I mean, they outgained Miami by 285 yards. Time of possession, 40-20. to 20. Plays run, 92-43. to 43. Like, it was just insane. The Bills were just not capitalizing on their opportunities. Like I've said, I said it on Twitter, I said it on, I believe on this channel even, the team that's best equipped to beat the Bills is sometimes the Bills. And maybe all the time, the Bills. It wasn't necessarily their fault at times because they're losing like guys like Christian Benford to injury. They're down, already down... Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer and Ed Oliver and Dane Jackson. So, I mean, yeah, there's an uphill climb. That is part of the variables, okay, the variables that I just alluded to as to why no team goes undefeated. And for the fans that are like, ha-ha, good, good job, Miami, like f fake patting Miami on the back about like, oh, congrats, you know, you beat our good small clap, golf clap or whatever, you beat our backups or our practice squad, I'm not here for that. I'm really not. At that point holds no water to me, okay? You can't brag all off-season about how best, best roster in the league, deepest team in the league, that's us, the Bills, and then cry about it when somebody beats you and your backups. This is going to happen. So, I mean, I, I give Miami credit, even though I do think the Bills win that game over 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time. Miami won. They're 3-0. We're 2-1. I, I mean... Where do we start? Let's find. Let's dive into why. Okay. What the point I'm going to look at here, primarily, is what the Bills did in the second half. Because early on in the game, the Bills are on the Miami 20 yard line in a minute. Okay, one minute into the game, or just over a minute into the game, they're already knocking on the door, and they end up going in into the end zone a few minutes later. Miami answers back. Um, with a turnover, actually, they punted on their first offensive possession. And then Javon Holland, one of my favorite players in the league, to be honest with you, it's not on the Bills. Great player on the end, forces the fumble. Miami takes over on the six. A couple plays later, they're in the end zone at 7-7. Seven, seven. Bills get the ball back, right down the field. Six minutes, 14 plays, touchdown, 14-7. Miami answers back with their drive, like their best drive of the game. Nine plays, 83 yards, five minutes, a touchdown. Chunk play after chunk play after chunk play. And it's on. I'm like, this is... This feels like a playoff game. And I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't nervous. I was maybe a little anxious. I don't know if this 
or those synonyms. Um, there's a word that I was feeling. I was like, I was, you know, this in my chair, like, okay, it is on. But I wasn't mad or anything because this is what I expected to happen. How, exactly how I expected it to play out is how it was playing out. The Bills were down a bunch of starters. Miami has a bunch of weapons. Here we go. Let's see what happens. But then the Bills started doing silly things. Not, you know, it's none of it's necessarily anybody's fault. But, like, the play at the end of the half that cost him three points where, Josh, there's a rule. There's a rule about fumbling an attempted spike. I, I don't know what it is, but he alluded to it in his post-game presser. So he wasn't sure what to do. But what he could have done is just grabbed it and just chucked it out of bounds, just over somebody's head, over Diggs' head. And he kind of maybe tried to, but Diggs extended for it, caught it, and then, it, oh, okay, well, we don't get the three points there. All right, well, we still have a whole second half. Let's see what happens when we come out. We stop Miami. You go on a 20-play, 87-yard drive and come away with three points. Take nine minutes off the clock. Give it back to Miami. They go three and out. We get the ball back. Six plays, 60 yards, miss a field goal. Is it tipped? It looked like it might have been whatever. Miami then has, you know, their next best drive of the game. They really only had two good possessions the entire game. That led to 14 points. Six plays, 72 yards. They. It's funny to say 72 yards because Jalen Waddle had 77 yards receiving on that one drive alone. Other than that, Hill and Waddle were, I don't think they had a catch in the first quarter. They were there, but they weren't super noticeable, overly effective. Hill finished with two for 33. Waddle ended up getting 100 yards because he had 72 on this drive alone. And, um, you know, the most frustrating play of the game to me was honestly the, the third and 22, um, where he basically just split the cover two. The Bills only rushed three. You know, Leslie Frazier admitted he needs to put his guys in a better spot there. I think it seemed like a pretty obvious deep ball pass attempt. Like, they're going to try something here because they're near midfield. You know, maybe they want to draw a penalty or, you know, just see what happens and try to convert it. If, if it gets picked, it's basically the same as a punt. You know, let's just try it. I, I would try it more often, to be honest with you. Um, uh, it's an understandable plan of attack. It just works. Waddle right up the seam, splits the safeties. And, you know, first and goal Miami. A couple plays later, they're in the end zone. And then they take, for the game-winning touchdown, what ended up being the game-winning touchdown. Um, but the Bills obviously get the ball back with an opportunity to um, take the lead back because it's 21-17 at that point. 17 plays, 73 yards. They turn it over on the, in the goal line sequence at the end of the game with that missed throw to Isaiah McKenzie on fourth down. I'm sure Josh wants that back. But, like, let's just recap the last three drives here. That's 43 plays. In the second half. The Bills ran 43 plays in the second half. Miami ran 43 plays in the entire game. The Bills have run 43 plays before their final possession even. Where they're scrambling trying to get in the field goal range. 43 plays! They've taken... Quick math here. That's 17... 41... That's 20, over 20 minutes? 20 minutes and 32 seconds, I think, if I did the math correctly. Miami didn't even have the ball that long. They had the ball for like 19, 20 or something the entire game. The Bills and their three second half possessions before they even got the ball back with 93 seconds left are <laughs> had the ball for 20 minutes. And they had three points to show for it. So how are you affecting the game on those possessions? The, the short answer is you're not. You're just taking time off the clock and trading it for three points. You're taking a third of the game and basically giving it away. Just wasting it. In exchange for three points. When you could have come away with, you know, they probably should have come away with 17. But they only came away with three. And these are the reasons you lose games in the NFL. Like, this is just, that's just how it goes. Um, kudos to Miami. Really, kudos to Miami. They won. I, I'm not going to give Mike McDaniel the, I'm not going to bow down. Wow, what a genius. Great job. Like, no, he challenged the first play of the game, which I thought was a little silly. I didn't think he really had a great chance of winning. Waste of time out. Um, you know, they, they had two nice drives on the next... Uh, out of their first three, six, seven possessions, you know, one started on the six-yard line. So out of six real possessions there, they had two good ones. Is that a good rate of return? I don't know. But and then on the last drive... You know, where they, they take over at the two-yard line and they go for negative one. They, I think they might try to sneak or something. Like a couple of runs right up there. They're just trying to waste time. Bills are using their timeouts. They get to third and 11. 
and he runs a pass play. Granted, it's a high percentage completion pass play, but you call it a pass play. Von Miller gets into his face, tips it, and what if that landed in Tremaine Edmonds' hands? He wasn't that close, but like he could have been. That's a realistic outcome of that play. I mean, how stupid would you feel? Like that's how close we are to Mike McDaniel being a complete moron. When he could have really just handed it off or had to a snap and just fall forward or something like that. And they would have taken 40 seconds off the clock. The Bills would have had to let the clock run because they, they didn't have another timeout. And they would have taken over maybe around midfield, I don't know, needing a touchdown. And only 50 seconds around there. You know, instead the Bills take over at their own 23 because the safety punt is just insane. I don't remember ever seeing somebody kick it as far as that guy kicked it. it super impressive, honestly. He was like 75 yards almost. Um, but they only needed a field goal. Is that a fair trade-off? I don't know. And doesn't your up back on the butt punt know not to backpedal into his punter, especially when you're that close to your goal line? I don't know. It's not, I'm not crowning Mike McDowell yet. They're 3-0? Sure. Not ready to crown him. I'm, I'm not ready to crown Miami the division winners, obviously. It's only week four now. You know, there's still tons of football to be played. Miami is in the driver's seat for the division, for home field. They're the only undefeated team left in the conference, but still a lot to go. Anyway, that's that. Let's talk about Baltimore. Um, Baltimore has been impressive in their own right, with the exception of the Week 2 game against Miami. Like, yeah, Mike McDaniel, the genius. He, he knew that if he just got his guys down 35-14 in Week 2, and that he only had the ball for 20 minutes and only 200 yards against the Bills, that they would come away with both games. Spare me. Anyway, Lamar Jackson is playing at an MVP level. I think 2021 was kind of an anomaly for the Ravens. They lost like they lost their two starting running backs, Dobbins and Edwards, before the season even started. Marcus Peters tore his ACL as well. Peters and Dobbins, or and Edwards, I believe, in the same practice. Um, Dobbins in a preseason game, like they, they were, it was an uphill climb for them right from week one. Um, this year, Dobbins comes back just last week, only nine touches, but I think his workload will steadily increase um, as the season goes on here. But Lamar's been fantastic, almost 750 yards passing, about 250 a game, 10 touchdowns, two picks. Uh, he has found deep threats in Rashad Bateman and Duvernay. They each only have eight catches through three games, but. Bateman has 226 yards and two touchdowns. It's 28 yards a catch. Duvernay has 121 yards, 15 yards a catch, three touchdowns. In his own right, Mark Andrews still his favorite target, uh, 22 for 245 and three touchdowns. I feel like the Marquise Brown thing was kind of addition by subtraction. Lamar and Marquise Brown can pretend like they were friends, and maybe they are friends, but it just wasn't there. It wasn't a system fit or something like that. You know, however you want to call it, the, the chemistry just wasn't there. Hollywood Brown was upset with his role in the offense. He would finally break free. Lamar would hit him, and he would drop it. Like I've never seen anybody drop more touchdowns than Hollywood Brown did um, over the past couple of seasons. So that was probably you know best for both parties. Um, Lamar has really just been insane on another level. 243 yards rushing, and the team only has 406 on the season. So you know he leads the NFL in quarterback rating, um, and that doesn't even include his rushing stats. So he's been a threat. This just I said all that basically to just tell you that this really isn't the same team that we've seen come to Buffalo in the playoffs and then I believe in 2019, near the end of 2019, where they just kind of ran the ball at you. We're like, hey, this is what we do. We run the ball and we're going to beat you that way. Um, because the playoff game, I mean, it was 17-3. to Lamar only had 162 yards passing, only 34 rushing. He left early with a concussion, as you might remember. Uh, the couples in the regular season, a couple of years prior, uh, he did have three passing touchdowns, but only 145 uh, passing yards. He added 40 rushing. So the Bills have actually done a decent job um, with him rushing the football. You know, 40 yards in two games is his, is his high. 40 and 34 hasn't gone over 162 passing yards. The Bills have done a nice job against him. So I kind of do think that the game might be a little bit low scoring, despite the fact that the Ravens have had trouble stopping people. Um, let me see this stat. I had it right here. So the Ravens allowed 447 yards to the Patriots last week, 547 to the Dolphins the week before that, and 380 to the Jets in week one. Uh, and the Jets only ended up scoring nine points. In terms of yardage, the Ravens have allowed the most, the most yards in the NFL. But, you know, the Bills 
got nearly 500 yards last week, and it only ended up translating into 17 points, ended up being 19 with the safety. The Ravens have scored the most amount of points in the league. I, I think that, you know, 37, 38, and 24, going back the last three weeks. I think that the weather might play a little bit of a factor. This Hurricane Ian, um, it, it will really be a tropical storm by then, or maybe just, you know, just a rainstorm at that point. But I think that it's going to rain for the game in Baltimore, which figures, because I'm going, I'll be there and standing in the rain rooting on the Bills. So if you're going, you know, hit me up. Hit me up on Twitter or my YouTube channel. My Twitter handle and YouTube username are the same. This is the part of the video where I usually give you guys that information, but I have to give you a prediction first. Let, let me pick the Bills in a close one, finally. But it's going to happen. Let's just quell this talk, this conversation. Let's get rid of it. I'm going to pick the Bills to beat the Ravens. Uh, let's go 26-21. Which is what the game nearly could have been last weekend. I picked weird numbers, but yeah, 26-21. Bills over Ravens. Um, guys, let's, I mean, let's talk about this. Let me know where you are with, like I, I said at the beginning of the video, where are you with this team? Um, I mean, do we still think they're the, the best team in the league. I still think they are. Probably the best team in the league. We just got to get some guys healthier, some guys back. You know, the, losing Micah Hyde sucks. Um, but hopefully Poyer's back this week, hopefully Oliver's back this week. They just signed Xavier Rhodes. I think that that was kind of just a necessary thing, even though Dane Jackson might be back this week. They don't want to be down to Jamarcus Ingram again. No offense to Jamarcus Ingram. I don't think he played terribly in, in you know, relief duty. But, you know, I think Rhodes is almost 100% active. But um, enjoy your weekend, guys. And as always, above all else, go Bills.